Friday, good morning, and welcome to the AMUs with me, Mapita CBD. Now, in our first story, lawyers for embattled Asin North MP have filed a notice of appeal at the Court of Appeal in Cape Coast seeking to overturn the decision of the High Court. They say the decision by the High Court was not based on law and was in breach of the 1992 Constitution as well as other statutory provisions. National Communications Officer of the National Democratic Congress, Sammy Jemfi, who led the legal team of James Quayson, says apart from the judge erring in law, the NDC would petition the Judicial Service to punish the Registrar of the Cape Coast Court and others who frustrated them when they wanted to file their processes last Sunday, Wednesday. They are saying that the decision was a travesty of justice and should be overturned by the Court of Appeal because, number one, the trial judge lacked jurisdiction to determine the matter. The matter borders on the interpretation of the Constitution. Rival meanings were put on the meaning of Article 94-2A, which was at the heart of this case. And per the laws of this country, the High Court judge was bound to refer the matter to the Supreme Court to interpret him because such issues fall within their exclusive jurisdiction under Article 130 of the 1992 Constitution. Secondly, we are saying that the trial court had no authority to determine this matter on the basis of foreign law without trial, without calling evidence. It was wrong for him to have resorted to Wikipedia and to information contained on the so-called renunciation certificate or a renunciation certificate to determine foreign law because per section 1-2 of the evidence act foreign law is a matter of fact and the supreme court has said that foreign law can only be determined at trial by adducing evidence preferably through expert witnesses and that was not done in this case you realize that this matter was hurriedly conducted and concluded on the basis of pleadings or uh, yeah, adduction of evidence and so on and we think that is against the evidence act and the laws of this country apart from that there is the issue of the decision being in violation of certain laws and certain decisions of the supreme court that is what the lawyers call paying period when a judge decides a matter in flagrant disregard for law or binding decisions of superior court that decision is paying period so we are saying that the decision violates section 21d of the representation of the people law pndc law 284 which says that qualification must be as at a time of election and not nomination again it violates the supreme court decision in the case of s party electoral commission parquesy in the interested party which says that nomination period is different from nomination days and so the nomination period is not just the date, the period between when forms are picked and submitted. But the nomination period goes beyond the nomination days, which is the period where forms are picked and submitted, and includes the period that the EC as an administrative body will use to assess the nomination form submitted, vet the information on same, offer opportunity for a candidate to correct, amend, or even hear and determine petitions that are challenging that nomination. And so, granted, or as... Meanwhile, Richard Kojanyako spent the entire day and reports James Quayson and the national leadership of the NDC went to the Asin North constituency to reassure them that the party will fight what they refer to as a battle, both politically and legally. Here's more in the following reports. <laughs> But I'm on it will not be forever. Their days are measured. And to me, I'm fighting for you people. If I have devoted my life, I have my life, I see what I have done. I have done my life. I I have done my life. 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 I'm 
Away from that, worker unions at the Simon Dong University Business and Integrated Development Studies are on strike. They're protesting a move by the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, GTC, to migrate staff of the school to the controller and accountant general's department, CAGD payroll, in violation of the conditions stated in the recent agreement between the university worker unions in Ghana, CAGD, and GTEC under the order of the National Labor Commission. Rafiq Salam reports from WA. Since we have not heard anything from the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission and the university management, we, the workers, the workers' unions, have therefore declared a strike effective today, August 2nd, 2021. President of the University Teachers Association of Ghana at the Simon Diego University of Business and Integrated Development Studies SDD Ubits, Dr. Joseph K. Wolofan, declaring an industrial strike on behalf of the various workers' unions of the university. The Ghana Tertiary Education Commission has forcefully placed the Vice Chancellor, the Acting Pro Vice Chancellor, and the Finance Director of SDD Ubits on the salaries and allowances below that of their counterparts that are earning in other public universities. We are therefore absolutely convinced that this intended migration will lead to a reduced salary and allowances of the other workers of UBIT. The various workers' unions, namely University Teachers Association of Ghana, Ghana Association of University Administrators, Senior Staff Association, Universities of Ghana, and the Teachers and Education Workers' Union says they are embarking on an industrial action following the clandestine move by the Tertiary Education Commission, GTEC, to migrate staff of SDD UBIS and CKT University of Technology and Applied Sciences onto the Controller and Accountant General Department payroll IPPD2. In violation of the conditions precedent and recent agreement between the University Workers Unions in Ghana, Controller and Accountant General Department, and the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission under the order of the National Labor Commission. Key among the conditions precedent for the Controller and Accountant General Department IPPD2 migrations are one, the IPPD2 application and adds on to be installed at the various campuses. Two, finance directorates and personnel to be trained on the use of the IPPD2 system without the direct involvement of the Controller and Accountant General Department. Three, the Controller and Accountant General Department to undertake a three-month test run with existing payroll data. As at now, ladies and gentlemen, none of these has happened on the UBIT and CK Tedem Universities. The various workers' union of the Simon Diego University of Business and Integrated Development Studies are not happy about what they term as a negative posture of the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission. They penciled the following reasons. The Ghana Tertiary Education Commission, led by Professor Mohamed Salifu, in Kahoot with other state agencies, has consistently tried to undermine UBIT in several fronts. 
including granting limited strolls for staff recruitment, impeding the creation of faculties and running of academic programs characterized by staff of UBIT as newly recruited staff, recommending for UBIT staff to be placed on conditions of service, that is salaries and allowances, below other public universities, and the unrelenting attempt to isolate and migrate SDD UBIT staff and that of, to, that of the Controller and Accountant General Department payroll prematurely. Security personnel at the campus or the university were directed at the end of the press conference to ensure that all officers and lecture halls are under lock and key. Behind me is one of the officers belonging to the community development is now under lock and key. SDD UBIT Sutak Secretary, Dr. Elijah Yendao, is leading the charge. The strike has been launched, and what we're going to do is that we are withdrawing teaching services. Even, even when it comes to supervision, assuming that a lecturer supervises, the student will come here to defend their award, their project works. Who will be here to, for them to defend the project work? I get the point. In actual sense, nothing will go on. And we have already instructed the security to lock all offices. From today, nobody will be seen on campus here to render services to this university. Few minutes after the decision was taken, some final year students of the university were the first to get a pinch of the strike action as they met the officers of the various faculties and departments locked. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wow. Residents in disaster-prone communities in the five regions of the north have affirmed the positive impact of improved water supply provided by the United Nations and its implementing partners. They say this has provided them an inclusive and universal access to clean and safe drinking water and other essential services. Martina Bougri reports. Speaking at the Commission of Some Water Supply Facilities at Ward K in the San Ergo Municipality of the Northern Region, the Assemblyman for the area, Salim Abubakar, said the water supply project and the hand washing facility continue to help people observe the COVID 19 protocols of hand washing after the area recorded 11 cases. This project, I consider, is one of the best projects in my community because. Uh, it, 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 uh, I think this uh, project that we've implemented today will uh, really help the, uh, the community to, to fight this COVID-19 bring sanitation to the, uh, to the community. Because, as I said, uh, last year we had like 10, 11 cases of COVID cases in this year. That was the highest case in the San Diego Municipal Assembly. So we had this project to fight this COVID-19 at the same time to bring sanitation to the electric area. And as I'm saying now, um, this every dry season we have water problem in the electric area. Uh, people it can, it can even go to six, seven miles, people doesn't even get water, water doesn't go to those pipes. Today we had this and I, I believe that it will save the good people of this area. Another resident of what came, Mohammed Asana, said they now have portable water, and that is a relief to the women who had to travel several kilometers in search of water. We were having issues with water here, and so we trek to Sangani each day to fetch water. But now we have the water at our doorsteps, and so we are able to use it the way we want. It is improving upon us sanitation and our children go to school and in the past our children used to get to school late because of the distance we had to travel so we just want to say thank you for those who have supplied us the water for Kol Abdlai, I'm a resident in the Kasna Nankana West District of the Upper East Region. The water system has made it easy to rear their animals, which has helped improve their incomes. The people who have not rearing animals because of lack of water. And the water too was far away, so they can't go there. And if the animals were going there, uh, they are being cut by tips. So because of this project, the water is now available. 
So those who were not even wearing, they are now into animals wearing. So this brings income to them. And then it tells the community, when you are to cook, wash everything, it will be easy for you. They are really a lot of animals, which includes goats, sheep, donkeys, cows, and uh, uh, fowl. Program manager of WASH in disaster prone communities of UN Habitat, Dr. Eric Mwakoro, said throughout the project they have been able to develop over 700 facilities between water supply, sanitation, and hygiene facilities for schools and healthcare facilities, among others. We have been working in 265 communities in the five northern regions. Many upper west, upper east, north, northeast, uh, savannah, and uh, northern region. And um, we developed quite 700, and 700 plus facilities between water supply facilities and sanitation facilities, principally for, from, uh, for, for schools in terms of institutional latrines, resilient latrines for community and water supply for all the 265 communities. So that people are using those facilities and after four years of having provided them, most of them are standing. And we, uh, we did another, another assessment to see how far they were standing flat. And 3% of whatever we did were having some minor uh, 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 issues. And, and most of them are related to management, but not about technical issues. So we are appealing to the government to continue sustaining our program, to also sustain the, 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 the population, the beneficiaries, so that they can get and continue using those facilities we are providing so far. Back here in Accra, the Ghana Statistical Service has for the second time announced an extension of the 2021 population and housing census to the 8th of August 2021. Briefing the media Monday, government statistician Professor Samuel Kobana revealed enumeration has crossed 99% in 15 regions in the country with exception of the Great Accra region, which still stands at 93%, thus the extension. In today's highlights, I'm going to highlight four main issues in terms of where we are with the 2021 population and housing census. It is important to know that data keeps coming through. So the data that we are sharing with you today is based on data that came through as at the end of 31st um, July 2021. We are still expecting data to come through from the work that was done yesterday and in the coming days. As a data, as a, as a data for 31st July 2021, in all the 16 regions, 15 of them had crossed 99%, with the exception of Greater Accra, that we are still with 93%, and we're going to work to ensure that the 7% outstanding for Greater Accra will be achieved. Indeed, in all the regions that have crossed the 99%, it doesn't necessarily mean that data collection is ongoing. As I indicated, one, data is flowing through to head office, so we are optimistic that once we analyze the data, we'll be hitting the 100% um, mark. Also, for purposes of data quality, as we indicated in our last release, we had to go back to some of the households to ensure that household validation and correction of errors is done. With all these, Ghana Studies Car Service will be redrawing from the field on the 8th of August. That is this coming Sunday, we're going to bring a complete closure to the data collection activities. And our next update will be when we'll be sharing with you provisional results from the 2021 Population and Housing Census. That's it for the AMUs. For more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com. My name is Mopito CBD. Mm -hmm. um, um, so on the front page, world <laughs> at mass... <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry. I am listening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm listening. Okay. Right. So, daily <laughs> graphic, uh, yeah. front page. World at mass driving peace in Ghana. You're not saying it with enough drama, Israel. There yeah. has to be The world is basically at a standstill and awe at the thriving peace in Ghana. Okay, now I get the joke. Yes. 
It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's the Angolan that's president. That's Angolan huh? president. Mm. And, uh, well, he's in the country. Mm. For a three-day uh, visit, I yeah. think, yeah. yeah. He's going to be addressing parliament as okay. well. And he's describing uh, parliament as a house of democracy. <laughs> so, yeah. So Again, he must have missed some of the proceedings from earlier this year. But yeah, okay. Well, it doesn't take away from the fact that it's a house of democracy. Okay, it's a house. I'll yeah. be good. It's a yeah. house of democracy. Okay, and uh, fifteen point three million dollar judgment debt overturned, mm -hmm. and that's uh, an interesting. That has to do with the heritage mining, you know, Galamsey yeah. uh, ruling by the uh, Kumasi Court. I'll get to that. So, the Kumasi High Court has quashed its own ruling, which slapped the government with a $15.3 million judgment debt for the unlawful seizure of properties belonging to a mining firm, Heritage Imperial Company. In its latest ruling, the court presided over by Justice Samuel J. Wu held that it had inherent jurisdiction, uh, it had, that it had inherent jurisdiction to set aside its own judgment mm. as it lacked jurisdiction to entertain the legal action that led to the an initial ruling, and you have a photo of um, the Attorney General Godfrey Dami in the. So apparently, uh, the Attorney General went went in again and uh, appealed, and that's how come they've set it aside. Okay, also, well, good stuff. Labor Commission directs UTAC to call off strike. So yeah, UTAC has been asked to call off its strike, but the strike is is biting. Yesterday, uh, as you saw. All through the news, we have been talking about it. Went to the various campuses of the uh, universities, and yeah, they it, it's 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 uh, taking a toll on them. Yeah, the, comp the, the students are, are worried because of their the exams have been called off. Called off, yeah. And all that. I, I mean, I think the reality of this again. Um, my niece, who is in Kenya USD, I um, was supposed to start exams yesterday. You know, she's in in medical school and I, I'm thinking about all the anxiety leading up to the examinations and the preparation that goes into yeah. it and then you know you find out a few days to writing your exams that it's been cancelled indefinitely you don't know when you're going to write it and I think the biggest losers in all of this is um, our, our children you know who are, are in school and who are, are having to deal with this so I really pray that some sort of resolution you know is, 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 is made soon Exactly. So that life can um, go back to normal, normal. Okay. yeah. Okay. For the serious students, that's it. <laughs> of course, the chillers will be chilling, yeah. you know. Yeah. So on the back page mm -hmm. of uh, the Daily Graphic, we've had a Sherman overpass repair start Friday. Is that a picture what, of what, a truck? Exactly. Hitting, oh gosh. That's what uh, mm. caught my attention. So you have uh, this photo of a truck. Mm. It was actually trying to go underneath the... The bridge? Uh, the bridge. And it got caught in there. So apparently it damaged it. And that's why they're having to do the repair. They're having to shut a, a section of the motorway so that they can. I certainly hope that there's been some sort of consequence. I hope so too. Uh, I mean, because how do you, you should know the height of the, the vehicle. And it's indicated as you approach it, mm. it's indicated there that uh, this is the allowance. You can't go. You can go above above that. Yeah, you yeah. Can go above that. So Doesn't I, I don't get it. Um, anyway, but note I said consequence, not consequence. <laughs> yeah. <Speak it> right. <laughs> police handman over police woman's death. I'm sure mm. you've uh, heard that story. The police have launched a manhunt for a man over the horrific death of his girlfriend, a police woman, Adamongo, the capital of the Savannah region. Police constable was found in a pool of blood with wounds believed to be knife stabs on her body at her Damango residence yesterday morning. A statement signed and issued by the Director of Public Affairs of the Ghana Police Service, the Lieutenant of Police, Sheila Kessia Beye Bakman, said her boyfriend was highly suspected and that the police were on a manhunt for him. Okay. Um, shall I go to the Ghanaian yes. Times? All right. And um, what's your favorite Methodist hymn, Israel? Um, none readily comes to mind, but I, I, love, I love hymns. Oh, okay. Well, I'm asking because the Methodist Church in Ghana is celebrating their 60th anniversary. Okay. Um, so, happy anniversary to them. Right. Um, I have some of my fondest memories, of course, are in school singing, you know, Methodist hymns and, and all of that. And even now, you know, it kind of stays with you 
how powerful those words are. So thank God for church and for hymns. Amen. Let, <laughs> let me do the front page of the Ghanaian Times this morning. Ghana, Angola vow to deepen bilateral ties. The court has set aside $15.3 million Gallum State judgment. As Sin North MP appeals High Court citizenship ruling. The government has declared tomorrow, um, Founders Day, August 4th, a public holiday. So no school, no work. Um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really apply to some of us. We'll be here, won't we? But they'll um, be fixed the country demo. They'll be fixed the country demo, yes. Of course, I'll be bringing you all of that live. Um, demand for better conditions of service. UTAG downs tools, but NLC orders it to call off strike. Now, yesterday, they weren't ordering any um, call-offs, but, uh, well, not in the morning, but um, I think as the day progressed, yeah. they did do that. The government's inability to procure COVID-19 vaccines was beyond control. That's according to John Kuma. And a lot going on in the world, in China and Turkey. There's been a flood in China. Um, the death toll has risen to about 300 people. Eight dead in Turkey as, as wildfires and golf resort. Um, don't know if you missed the Olympics highlights. Marcel Jacobs, the Italian, has inherited Usain Bolt's 100 meters. Um, don't, don't we miss seeing Usain Bolt running on our screens with, you know, all those muscles and just getting your blood pumping? Anyway, um, there's a new Usain. His name is Marcel. Middle page, um, the 2021 population census is 99% complete. There'll be a final mop-up exercise expected to end August 8th. Have you been counted, Israel? Yes, I have. Okay, well, be interesting to know if you've been counted and um, follow us on all our social media um, handles, pages. Let us know if you've been counted. Um, we'd like to know that. Now, the greater Accra region is topping cases, COVID-19 cases, active cases, as of July 28th with 2,650. Um, so we're leading the Ashanti and Eastern region are following closely. Um, so just a gentle reminder to be safe out there and very, very aware of the fact that COVID-19 is still with us. Um, I think that's about it okay. for I'm, me. I'm actually going back to the daily graphic and okay. to page 16 and 17. Labor Commission directs uh, Utah to call off strike. A seen North MP appeals high court ruling, mm -hmm. which was in the news uh, this morning. And uh, then the story that's of interest to me is Goom vows to win a Sin North by election. Oh, okay. So the Central Regional Communications Director of the Ghana Union Movement, Goom, is Isaac Minu has expressed the party's determination to convincingly win the Sin North parliamentary seat, which has been declared vacant by Cape Coast High Courts. And um, now the UTI minister is also urging politicians stop interceding for offenders. No, oh, yeah. And he says uh, when someone is arrested for making the environment dirty. If the National Democratic Congress chairman does not follow him to the police station or court, the new Patriotic Party chairman will follow him. <laughs> <laughs> That's typical of us. Oh, gosh, yes. Isn't it? Everything is political. Everything is about votes. So move on. Okay, you you so just read the Daily Graphic. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so we go to the Daily, daily Guide. guide mm. And uh, the Daily Guide got, got set aside a $15.3 million Gramsci judgment as a heritage mining story. Uh, Canada MP fights back and uh, Ghana Angola chart new course. Anodon Pret tackles Harry Nidrisu over judge attack. And that story is on page six. So I'll quickly go there. So, uh, Majority Chief Whip Frank Anodon Pret has chastised Minority Leader Harry Nidrisu for attacking the judiciary following the decision of the Cape Coast High Court that cancelled the 2020 parliamentary election results won by the NDC's James Yachikwesin. The court presided over by Justice Kwesi Bwache removed Mr. Kwesin from parliament after being found to be holding dual citizenship in breach of the 1992 constitution. All right, so I'm trying to locate uh, exactly. Okay, so Mr. Anodon Prayer, MPP MP4 and so on by Andrew is not happy that Harry Idrisu, who is the NDC MP for Tamale South, will seek to make disparaging comments about judges when he's supposed to know better. Harry Idrisu reacted to the verdict of the court, said, or reacting to the verdict of the court, has said specifically that what is worrying we don't want to believe is that the courts of Ghana have been captured and that the courts have become a forum being used surreptitiously to tilt the balance of power. Mm. Okay, so uh, also in the 
Daily Guide, too napped for trying to send narcotics phones to cells. And support new UG management. That's our going vice chancellor. One mm -hmm. injured in gas station fire. Hetzman stabbed to uh, Hetzman stabbed to death while protecting his animals. And oh, let's this one to books in memory of Dr. Doris Date launched. Now Doris Date, Dr. Doris Date was my uh, lecturer at uni. You know she's passed. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they've launched. So in commemoration of the one-year anniversary of the uh, passing of communication specialist Dr. Doris Ya uh, Krantima Date, two books she authored have been launched. The first book, The Watchwoman, a compilation of columns, a 599-page book, was launched wow. by the chairman of the National Media Commission, Yabwedo Yabwafo, who hailed the late Dr. Date for her, her consistency. Okay, and... Um, in the middle of spread, <laughs> Mahama warns public over his daughter and features a photo of uh, Farida Mahama, who's the daughter of uh, ex-president John Mahama. Can, can you tell us what this warning entails? All right. So former president John Dramani Mahama has cautioned the general public of uh, scammers using the name of his daughter, Farida Mahama, on social media. So he says, my daughter is not on social media. Okay, so yes, if you see anything some handles, yeah, some that have her name. Saying, okay, fair enough. Yeah, okay. Farida Mahama. Women are superheroes. Yes, and, definitely. Uh, Ella Mitch replies, Wendy Shea. Okay, popular actor dies on set. Oh, Jay Pickett. Oh. Um, an actor known for his roles in TV soap operas like General Hospital and Days of Our Lives, who died on Friday. Oh. Sorry Sad, about that. Yeah. yeah. 20 firms provide designs for Agenda 111, Fidelity Bank, MDF, West Africa Train, SMEs. All right. Back page. Kane missing at Tottenham training ground. Oh, Hurricane. Really? Gaka get local government su uh, boss support. And police whips Bukum Vampa in arm wrestling super match. Oh, how did we miss this yesterday? Has What's that? Staunch fan is dead. No, that's not the, you know, the story. The story is that Hats <laughs> is now in the FA Cup final. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, they're likely to make it a double. Okay. Um, I take it you're a Hats fan. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, I'm not, so... I do know how to sing Arose, 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 ah. though. Um, which apparently is Arise, Arose, Arisen, or something like that. Yeah, something. Too. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So whole, I think Manasseh wrote a whole. Oh, our roots, our roots are old. Not we're Arise, not, Arose, Arisen. We're not, we're not singing this morning, so. Our roots, our roots are old. But, but how, does then, how does that then translate to be quiet and don't be silly? Please don't worry about it. Sorry. <laughs> be okay. quiet and don't be seen. We're not singing this morning. Because our roots are old. Sing. We're going to sing again <laughs> after the uh, FA Cup final. Okay, all right, Israel. We're taking the trophy. All right, Israel. Let's yeah. move on this morning to the Daily Statesman. And front page of the Daily Statesman, Akufado. Ghana is making education accessible to all. And that's true. And uh, we're happy about that. We're just a little concerned about the quality. Yeah. So 15.3 million judgment debt parried as Attorney General fights Heritage Imperial Company and a picture of Godfrey Damid there. Hello, good morning to you, sir. 99% households captured in 2021 census. The exercise ends August 8th. James Quayson appeals ruling annulling his election as MP. And you heard him in the 6 a.m. news. Um, Let's see, okay. In Team Fodjo, we did the story yesterday. The best cure for poverty is quality education. Um, our COVID-19 test meets international standards. Dr. Patrick Kuma Abwaje, the Ghana Health Service Director General, has been speaking. Now, there's a little story here um, on page five of the Daily Statesman, and the title is Gender Tsunami. And it talks about the fact that there's a woman as vice chancellor at the University of Ghana, Legon, and what that means um, for women in leadership. And um, he goes on to talk about um, the benefits of having, having women in leadership, of course, which are many. Um, we do wonder if she will be um, moved from acting to substantive, you know, at some point. So, well, we'll watch. Yes, that's going to happen. Yes, watch that space. Um, 
Okay, Ghana Cares government spends 8.1 million Ghana CDs to preserve livelihoods. And apparently the government spent 8.1 million Ghana CDs feeding and taking care of over 200 families um, immediately after the COVID-19, the lockdown and all of that. So just supporting and making sure that they were okay. Um, some other stories. Um, Wuta exposes KOD over GLOW money. Sakodi apologizes to Nanado over tweet on Happy Day song. Some international stories. Um, Ethiopia's Tigray crisis. Rebels vow to fight on until blockade ends. Tanzania, over 650 Israeli tourists. Oh, to arrive in there. That's good, 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 good business. 650 tourists um, coming from Israel. Okay. Um, Turkey wildfires. I told you about that a little earlier on. COVID-19. First people arriving into UK after rules have been relaxed for fully jabs. So I see that they're testing the power of their vaccinations there. Um, I hope that goes well. Um, and on the back page, um, some football. Um, and also Hudson Odoi could be more dangerous on the left. Chelsea boss. So Hudson is being moved um, to the left. And um, some stuff about Belarus Olympian given Polish visa after refusing forced flight home. That's it for the Daily Statesman. Okay, so BNFT. On the front page, banks taste for government bills over private sector lending worrying. BOG as it fears it can affect recovery efforts. So you see that over time, the private sector is more interested in sending mm. or taking up uh, or borrowing or lending to government. Okay. Because, yes, they know that if they lend to government, by all means, they're going to get it. Of That's course. why they'll, they'll buy the treasury bills and the bonds and all of that. But um, they're, they're saying that this is worrying us. It can, it fears it can affect, the Bank of Ghana says, it can affect uh, recovery efforts. And, and it's true. If um, the banks are rather giving the money to mm. the government, and it means the private, you're crowding out the private sector, and the private sector can have access. Can have access to yeah. that. And then Sankofa and Afina unitization, Ampar's likely to dumping investor confidence as IES, but says power struggle, government's posture not helping. Consortium ready to produce COVID-19 vaccines locally, as major industry players on it, at 2021 Pharma Awards. Yes, would love to have the vaccines uh, produced locally. Um, it's going to take a while. I, I speak to some experts who say, not that easy. It's going to mm. take, it's going to of take course. a while because we need to put in place the systems and the structures to make that possible. All right. And then uh, the, on page nine, after the long road to Africa's promised land of trade and prosperity, some articles there you can read. And uh, let me see what else. It's in the center spread. Quickly get to that. Okay. So, oh, in the sense where this is all about sports. Thomas Pate, Tokyo Olympics. Okay. Then back page, corporate executives to sign up for three-day emotional intelligence training. Okay. Oh, that, that makes me so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, most farmers are aware of government's main agri programs. That's according to a survey. Okay. Let me go to ABC News this morning. Um, front page, the fact sheet, $200 million Saglami housing project scandal. Um, Nigerian doctors strike over pay and inadequate facility. So they're striking. No, be Ghana pay. Mm. Um, okay, National Cathedral. This, this one, um, Israel. National Cathedral, has anyone pointed a gun to your head to donate? Deputy Maslock boss to critics. So Ifia Koto, the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Microfinance and Small Loan Center, um, has hit back at critics um, of a recent fundraising appeal for the National Cathedral. So she posted on Facebook, and this was cited by Ghana Web. She took fault with the critics of the initiative and criticized them for not being good representatives of the Christian faith. She noted that during the fundraising campaign for the National Mosque, people of the Muslim faith came together to support the project. But in the case of the cathedral, the Christians, who she believes should be encouraging people to donate, are the ones discouraging people. Okay, so how is she able to tell that the people who are criticizing here are Christians anyway? Yeah, um, it goes on to say, sadly, the things I'm reading on this street is coming from those we think are Christians. A churchgoer can't decide for a believer. And please, who has put a gun 
at your hearts and heads to contribute towards the National Cathedral. If you all won't support it, just shush. And allow some of us who understand what it means to be part of building. I, I don't know how I feel about, you know, government officials speaking like this. Um, I'm going to stay out of trouble and not say anything. <laughs> um, did you want to say something about oh, it? No, um, except to say, well, yes, you shouldn't be speaking like this since you're trying to bring on board a lot more people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you should avoid, you know, comments. Exactly, because it really is a, a personal decision, isn't it, to yeah. donate or not to donate. Yeah. And also freedom of speech, you know, to criticize or not to criticize. I guess she's exercising her freedom of speech, except that you're in government. Um, anyway, like I said, I want to let Pfizer and Moderna raise prices for COVID-19 vaccines in the EU. So those are going up. Israel, this one is very interesting. Okay. Let me just find it for you right now. Pastors cannot deny potential couples marriage due to HIV status. So Dr. Stephen Aisiado, Programs Manager for the National AIDS SCI Control Program, has stated categorically that it is illegal for churches and religious leaders to demand HIV tests from potential couples before blessing their marriage. I'm sure you know that some churches do that, demand yes. HIV, sickle cell, you know, all of that. And then based on that, they will decide whether to go ahead with the blessing or not. And he says once HIV status is not the standard to measure one's ability to love and procreate. Well, um, he has a point, but I think that, you know, considering the times in which we find ourselves where people are not open with each other, mm. it, will, it, it is helpful for the church to be the intervener, to take whatever information it is and then make it available to them. And then they will decide whether they still want to. Yeah. But once the two of them says, yes, my partner is HIV positive, but I still want to marry. Mm. That's fine. You can go ahead and do that. But yes, I don't see why they would want to stop them because one, one person is HIV. Is HIV. Yeah. Like you said, the especially in these entirely, times yeah. when technology allows us to have um, conjugal relations with people who have HIV and stuff and not get infected. Yeah, and have but, children, you know. But with both parties must go into it knowing. Knowing and understanding. Yeah, understanding the that technicalities. This is, yeah, yeah. this is what it is. Yeah, so. There shouldn't be any surprises. No. But, you know, go back to that mm -hmm. story. There's something mm -hmm. that you're missing, the back page. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. What do you see there? Oh, God. I think you should just read it, Israel. Okay. I can read it. <laughs> MTNFA Cup, Ashanti Gold Cruise into finals after thumping Brickham Chelsea. Your point is? Yeah, they're going to meet. Uh, <laughs> That's a fair. Okay, all right then. Point well made. Okay. Doubly made. Let's go to the finder. Mm -hmm. ECG Greco clash over who should sell power for industrial use. Uh, this is an interesting It is, story. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's, been, it's been going for some time now. So, you know, VRA and ECG ideally are the ones who should be selling uh, power. To, so VRA sells to bulk customers and then ECG to us. us okay, and some industries. That, um, but then apparently they're saying that Greco is, is selling, is also selling. Um, well, we need to look into that. If it's really the case that Greco is also selling. Now, three firms paid $13 million for same consultancy services on the Saglemi project fine in excess of uh, $5 million stated in EPC agreement. And then make peace and interfaith for one's bedrock for development chief imam. NLC, someone's you tag over strike. And then the policeman stabbed to death at Domongo and they've, they've posted a, a photo of the policewoman on the front page of the finder. And let's go to the census spread. Okay, so the stairs are then the census spread. Rose Minister warns vehicle owners against overloading. Mm. GIS rewards gallant officers for the commendable act. In 2021 census, 99% of households counted. Excise ends August 8th. And uh, that will be it for me. Okay, um, shall we move up to our online um, stories? Okay, fantastic. And um, whilst we're doing that switch, let me just tell you about a couple of stories on the front page of the Daily Dispatch. Ghana is a model of religious tolerance, as according to Baumia. Um, Ewe is the second most spoken language in Ghana. 
That's interesting. Okay. Um, I I think three possibly would be the first. The first. Yeah, a few weeks. Da 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 da. Can't find what the first was. Okay. But must definitely be yeah. Definitely. Um. So anyway, that's on page two of the Daily Dispatch. If you want to have a look at it. But yeah, definitely. Let's go to our online, um, stories. Myjoyonline.com. alleged five million. Um, CJ bribe um, as a lawyer drags GLC to court. Yeah. Um, Israel, I think you have a yeah, better so view. Yes, they alleged a $5 million CJ bribe, uh, OJ Dom's lawyer drags the General Legal yeah. Council to court. And then it's not smart to bring in soldiers to de-escalate minor protests. HQC Premper says that University of Ghana students bear brunt as user strikes kicks in. Anti-LGBTQ plus bill, Ghana Treading on slippery slope. I doubt a covado will assent to it, HQC Prempe. And uh, she circulated my nudes because I refused to break up with our boyfriend. Wow. And that's an interesting story. We want to I get know, on right? uh, to read. George uh, Quasing appeals an element of 2020 as saying no parliamentary election. It's a glimmy scandal how the same consultancy service Whoa. was allegedly awarded three times for $13 million. Enjoy FM's Dorian Ando, Bank's prestigious Woman of the Year for excellence in media, media award. And police constable allegedly murdered in cold blood by boyfriend in Damongo. And uh, I'll use this opportunity to say congratulations to Doreen Ando. Of course. Um, yeah, congratulations, Doreen. We do love you. And of course, to you guys, thank you for staying with us here on Joy News. And we're going to take a quick break. We have some sports coming up for you. We also have lots of exciting conversations this morning and um, some entertainment at some point. Um, who knows, maybe we'll spring a few surprises here and there. But follow us on our social media handles. Let's, let's get live and interactive. Um, we'd love to do that with you. So don't go anywhere. Sports will be coming up next. Now, let's talk about football stories where the head coach of Great Olympics, he's considering his future outside the club because management is here to approach him to extend his stay with them after his contract expired in the just-ended Ghana Premier League season. He's been speaking to my colleague, Mubarak Haruna, and we felt this report. Amar Walker guided Great Olympics to finish set on the league table in the just-ended Ghana Premier League season. However, his contract with the Wonder Club has expired and the former Brecum Chelsea and Nanya FC head coach has opened his doors to moving away from the Accra-based club if his contract is not extended. If uh, maybe there should be this understanding, because as I'm talking to you now, um, I have uh, one season with Olympics which I have uh, finished my season after our last match. But the GFA calendar season is not ended because we are still playing the FA Cup. So I'm waiting till maybe management or um, tells me they want to renew my contract or whatever, uh, or my doors are open for any team that wants to come. The work done by Anna Walker at Great Olympics won him many admirations. He says he's committed to the cause of the club as supporters wants him to stay on to continue the work he has started with. The fans uh, will not like me to leave Olympics. And uh, management uh, knew my contract was getting finished at the end of the season. So uh, they should have uh, called to ask uh, maybe my view or my intention of maybe staying or leaving. Uh, till we're talking now, they've not told me anything. But the supporters or my fans want me to stay in Olympics. But that all depends on management. So if there are something to ask, then they should ask management whether they, maybe 
management have their reasons of uh, not asking me to renew my contract. Uh, so uh, I'm looking at management at the moment. As for my fans and the supporters, uh, I want to, to do something for them, for them to feel happy, which I have done at least this season, I've done something small to make them happy. Anwar Walker had set himself a target of finishing among the top four clubs in the Ghana Premier League. But the club ended the season sit on the league table. From Great Olympics, let's talk about Real Tramale United. They gained promotion to the Ghana Premier League for the first time since 2012-2013 campaign when they were relegated from the country's top flight competition. According to head coach of the team, Shaibi Ibrahim Chanko, there were so many people who contributed to the success of the team, including the current vice president of the country, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. And he says that with the support he got from management and supporters, he would augment the squad to ensure that they are very competitive when they participate in the Ghana Premier League next season. RTU made a return to the Ghana Premier League for the first time since 2012 and 13, when they were relegated from the top division. The man who masterminded the success of the team in their qualification to the country's domestic top flight competition, Shaibi Ibrahim Tanko, says the contribution of everyone, including the vice president of the country, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, played a crucial role in the team winning Zone 1 of the Division 1 League. Yeah, in fact, um, RTU as it is, is, is a club that uh, anybody who grew up in the north cherishes so it has it has been a name that exists in all in all the houses in the north i mean in in the 70s and then 80s we we'll be wondering what type of attitude they are talking about so i mean it is it, something that people want to see and 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 those i mean uh, people who, who who really supported the team including the vice president, his excellency, they were all supporters of RTU when they were here. Mm. Before they left, they were all supporters of RTU, including everybody, including us, the old players who have come to assist me to do the job. I mean, I, when I came and then we put the team through, and that, 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 that was the motivation. I mean, uh, that, 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 that has brought us Thank this you. With the enormous support given to him by the management and fans of the club, Tanko says he will augment the squad to make it very competitive for next year's Ghana Premier League. Yeah, um, for now, I mean, uh, I understand there's going to be another championship. Yeah, okay, yeah. So we were doing scouting of some players who we feel can come and support the cause of our team. So, I mean, uh, I'm here to submit my report to the management. I mean, I will, I, will, I, will, I will advise them to look for those players to augment the, the, the team that we have. So that will build a winsome that's, that's team. That's good. The last time RTU participated in the Ghana Premier League, they were relegated without winning a single match. And that was an unwanted record set by RTU in their participation in the Ghana Premier League in 2012-2013, where they ended the season without winning a single match, and they are seeking to end that when they return to the top flight next season. Now, let's talk about another team that has qualified to the Ghana Premier League for the first time in their history. And this time around, we are talking about Bibiani Gold Stars. They won Zone 2 as they made their first ever qualification to the Ghana Premier League. Head coach of the team, Kobner Emisa, who had already qualified three other teams into the country's top flight competition has been talking about the strategy required to qualify teams from the lower division to the Ghana Premier League. I realized that what I did at Birkum Chelsea, I have to try my possible best to repeat that thing at the uh, uh, second year Azakis. Initially, I was telling myself, can I make it this time for the second round? But I realized that in Division 1, you don't need too much kind of procession, which most of the teams I play with try to do that. But as I, I told you earlier on that, putting 
three or four or five parties together in some kind of pitches is difficult. So I adopted a strategy by myself that just players, let's cross the centre before we do the possession. Because on our side, any player who tries to do possession, maybe you can fumble with the ball because the pitch is not all that good. So let's cross the centre line and keep the possession over there. And then I give them the instruction, particular instruction, and my players listen to me. So when they get there, you see they enjoy the game, but when we are in a half and you are a spectator, you not enjoy my team because we don't have much time at the back. The much time that we need to spend is to be at the opponent attacking third. There you enjoy it because... So you were using this strategy from with all the four clubs that you qualified from there. Exactly. Right. And that is where most of the coaches in Manzo doesn't realize that. That's your trick. That's exactly my strategy. From Bibiana Gota, let's talk about Sakendi Hazaka's ladies. They are representing the country in the first ever CAF Women's Champions League. The qualification series ended yesterday and they were able to defeat Bokanabe side USFA by two goals to zero to make it to the first ever stage of the CAF Champions League. <laughs> Congratulations to coach Yusuf Vasigi and the entire management and playing staff of Sekendi Hazakes for lifting high the flag of Ghana as they participate in the first ever Women's Calf Champions League that will be staged in Egypt. On this note, I say thanks very much for joining me for AM Sports on the AM Show. Head on to myjoyonline.com and read some more sports stories. As you can see, party to have a scan on ankle injuries suffered in Chelsea friendly. An unfortunate story for a Ghanaian star over there and a plethora of stories that includes hurricanes failing to show up for training uh, for Spurs. Many say he's forcing a move away and he's been reported to be closer to joining Manchester City for a reported transfer fee of about £160 million. Is it going to happen? Would it not happen? Time would tell. Thanks very much for joining us. The AM show continues. All right, well, welcome back to the AM show. I'm Israel Laim, and we're on to AM Talk now. And my guest for this morning, Dr. Mark Kerd Nawani, who is a uh, member of he's a member of Parliament for NABDAM. He's a member of the Health Committee in Parliament and a member of the Subsidiary Legislation Committee. And then I also have Vincent Kor Asefwa, MP Old Tafo. He's a member of the Education Committee and a member of the House Committee. And we have a number of interesting issues to discuss. Good morning to you. And uh, welcome to AM Show. Yeah, well, the first yeah good morning. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I've met you several times, right. uh, Vincent. But, yeah, so uh, for this you, is my first time yeah, coming to First too. time. Okay. Don't worry. So we have a number of issues. Um, which one would you want us to start with, uh, Vincent? Well, I'm okay with any issue, but um, uh, let me say a very good morning to uh, our cherished viewers. Okay. Uh, and your constituency. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm in my constituency, Old Tafu constituency. Um, when you come to Old Tafu constituency today, 
um, around one o'clock, the second round of the interquiz um, that was organized for my office okay. uh, will be held today. So I'm using your platform to um, publicize this program. Uh, it's a math and science um, quiz that um, we are doing in Old Tafo Constituency. It's going to end on the 27th of September um, 2021. Um, it's actually falls on my birthday. And so on that day, um, I will invite um, Joy, okay. um, Asempa, Adum FM, Adum TV, all of them to be able to come and cover um, the program. Sure. Uh, checking the newspapers, I know that issues of um, LGBTQ, issues of uh, Asin North Central, Asin North uh, MP, and um, what have you. But I will go on the Asin North issue. Okay. I am seeing a certain kind of uh, uh, behavior on the part of the NDC and even the Asin North MP himself. That is, if it is right to call him a member of parliament as we speak, where there seemed to be a blatant disregard to our laws of this country. Why am I saying this? Doc, you remember on the 6th and 7th of December, sorry, January, that we were having the swearing in ceremony of the Speaker of Parliament and we needed to also vote to that effect. A number of the members of Parliament, especially on the side of the New Patriotic Party, cautioned the Asin North MP not to hold himself around as a member of Parliament. I remember vividly the statement from the Honorable Minority Leader, and he even quoted Article 106 of the 1992 Constitution that a member of Parliament or any person who so believes that you cannot hold yourself as a member of Parliament or knowing that you do not qualify to vote on the floor of Parliament and goes ahead to vote and make decisions that will affect who becomes a Speaker of Parliament will have him or herself to be blamed. Now, the, the Honorable Minority Leader even made statement that we should allow him to err on the side of the law, knowing very well that there was a court injunction on the 6th of January informing you that you cannot hold yourself as a member of parliament. Yet, he was on the floor of parliament, voted for the Speaker of Parliament yeah. to have been elected. Today, another court of jurisdiction, the same laws and regulations of this country that elected you as a member of parliament has ruled that the injunction that was given on the 6th of January should stand. You cannot hold yourself as a member of parliament because the laws of this country, as chapter 3 of the 1902 Constitution, demands citizenship. You should not have been holding an, any allegiance to any country at the time that you were filing to be a member of parliament. So, okay, so this has been a, an issue that went to court, and I believe that we should be dealing with the latest ruling. Right. which is that he shouldn't hold himself. Absolutely. Does he still come to Parliament? Yesterday, he said that he is still a member of Parliament for the good people of Asin North. And I don't see how the NDC will allow him to be making such statement. That the court that you, you, you disregard, the court that you disrespect, you are going to that same court, that is the court of appeal, to ask for a better judgment that will be in your favor. You are already disregarding and disrespecting the judiciary a court of jurisdiction, a superior court of judicature, has given a ruling that at the time that you were filing, you, you did not allow yourself to be ruled by the tenets of the law. It's also fair for the, I mean, some majority MPs, or you yourself, you can take it up and, uh, in court. Well, that's what I'm saying, that you have already taken the issue to the court of appeal. Why don't you allow the court of appeal to rule as to whether your claims that you're making that the High Court erred on the side of the law. Mm. And for that matter, you believe that you, you have to be 
allowed to be holding yourself as a member of Do parliament. That, that is the Dr. issue Nawan, you, you of the call to make. To okay, let me say good morning to the viewers of uh, uh, Joy News uh, programs and also um, say in my local language, uh, I greet my people. Uh, I just greeted my people. Uh, good morning, and I'm in uh, Joy News program this morning. Um, <clears throat> well, there's no need crying over spilled milk, and um, he has spoken a lot. Uh, I believe that he's missing the issue. The issue was this: that a day to um, on the day. He had already been declared the winner by the electoral commissioner. And on the day of the swearing in, there was an attempt to save him from the court. And they brought successful. Yes. And they brought it to Parliament. Meanwhile, he was not yet a member of Parliament. So why bring the servant to, par uh, to, 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 to Parliament when he was not yet a member? He has to be sworn in to become a member for him, for his um, serving process to be passed through parliament. I was a sitting MP. So um, at that hour, I was still an MP because of continuity. Yeah, so somewhere like me, I could have been served. But he was here to be sworn in as a member of parliament for it to be right for the parliament to serve him. So parliament could not have served him when he was not a member of parliament. So he was sworn in, now as a member of parliament, and the process continued. Immediately he was sworn in, the process of electing the speaker came in. And he, he took part at his own risk. Yes, he is, he's saying that, yes, um, he was sworn. He was sworn, yes, and he took part. It's up to whatever judicial process that you want to evoke, that is up to you. It's your own beef. Okay, granted, but you, you can move, moving on to the latest ruling. Yeah, the latest ruling, um, I've, I, I've understood it, and that we are going to make an appeal. We want to exhaust all the judicial process. But the court has already ruled. Yeah, the, the court... You ruled yourself out, has Yeah, the court has, has, has ruled, but just the morning before the court ruled, <coughs> We are trying to file an appeal for the interpretation. And you were not successful? No, 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 no. We went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court asked us to come and follow the procedure. And that is where the registrar and the clerks and the accountants disappeared in the morning. <laughs> so you, you were see? not successful? So this was not like, we call it mafia. <laughs> you know, and those who were behind it, I don't know. But we have also written to the Chief Justice but the point is... To punish the registrar. Okay. The, you know, the point is... Or to hold the registrar and all those clerks accountable. The point is... Because they were supposed lawyers, to report to work at a particular time. The lawyers were not successful in filing whatever uh, injunction... You yeah, because of this behavior of the court registrar and his clerks, his uh, accountants, etc. So, so he, we had no place to pay our money to indicate that so we have filed the, 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 the process. He, could, he couldn't still hold himself out. And that is why the ruling was able to, 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 to come out. Okay. And we have, we have obeyed and agreed. I don't think that he's not coming to parliament. I've observed uh, he, uh, he sits for some so days if now. he's not coming to parliament, why do no, you... No, 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 no. When you go to a platform... Member of parliament? Eh? When you go to a platform, I, for example, before I became an MP, could say that, look, I'm doing the work of the MP. I'm the ex-official MP of oh, your, really? your, your, your... Yes. You know, of, of, of NAPDAM, even though uh, I was not the MP. No, but Israel, just, just a, a you know, so for this. This doesn't yeah. mean that he's, uh, he's disobeying the, 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 the state. You know, platform speaking is different from actually disobeying uh, the, the court. If he was disobeying the court, that was shown in his, uh, with his presence in, 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 uh, on his seat in parliament. Mm -hmm. But I think that but, something but, of the but, sort have not happened. So let us not say that he's disobeying the court. But Doc, Doc, the truth As of the matter speak. also is that on the 6th of January... Oh, don't turn it back Hold there. on, you hold I on. I think we have gone... Go no, I understand. I'm just saying yes. that on the 6th of January, when you were a former MP, that is when Parliament was dissolved, you and myself and the Honourable Judge Quaison, 
were at the same level that we were just not members of parliament. And even yourself, because at the time, parliament was dissolved. So you cannot approbate and reprobate. You cannot say that because at the time you were a former member of parliament, the court could have served you, but could not have served. Well, that, 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 that's, uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, it was. But the point I want to make is that, Israel, uh, uh, it, is, it, is, it is not right for someone who is supposed to be a legislator, who is supposed to be making laws for this country, to be seen or appear to be disregarding okay. and disrespecting the same laws that you go and sit in parliament to make. No, he was not disrespecting. He has been declared he has been let, by the Electoral Commission. Let's stay in parliament and uh, let's look at the, the anti-gay legislation which was uh, laid before the House yesterday. I don't know what your positions are. There are a number of MPs who have come out to say that they support it outright. And, but there are others to, well, we don't know what the position is. It looks like, um, that, well, the speaker has made it clear that he is looking at this bill being passed. What is your position on it, Vincent? Well, I think last week I had the opportunity to comment on this matter on one of your sister stations. And I was thinking uh, uh, wrongly okay. about what I said. With respect to my training as a Protestant Catholic, I have no reason to support LGBTQ. In fact, I'm going to be one of the first people to vote for the bill when members of parliament finally has the opportunity to do so. Right. Now, this bill, in my mind, is supposed to be curing certain inaccuracies in our existing laws. And the existing laws, I mean Section 104 of the Criminal Offences Act. And Section 104 of the Criminal Offences Act defines what unnatural canal knowledge is. The same Section 104 issues out the punitive measures that will be meted out to anybody found breaching Section 104 of the, uh, of the Criminal Offences Act. Now it says that if you are seen breaching Article, oh, sorry, uh, Section 104 of the Criminal Offences Act, one, that is um, on natural canal knowledge, you are supposed to be given at least a sentence of five years imprisonment, at least, and maximum of 25 years. Now my point is, why do you now take a new bill to parliament that is not portraying the anger that is already seen in section 104, but rather reducing the punitive measures that is given mm. out in your existing laws. Because if the existing law says that you're supposed to be punished for five years, at least a maximum 25 years, the current bill that is going to parliament is making it three years, a maximum five years. It, it could be that they're looking at the, the times in which we find ourselves. And, well, it is, it is open to amendments. So, so, so you can, do, do you agree that it is not portraying the kind of anger that you and I, as Ghanaians, has against LGBTQI? No. So when we make this point, the, point, the, the, the understanding that we want the Ghanaian people to understand is that, yes, we agree with the principles and the philosophy of anything that is LGBTQI, our, our basics, and fundamentals as uh, a nation, our moral fabric is, is frowning on LGBTQI. But doing so, we should not be so quick with our emotional masturbation by not allowing ourselves to understand what is really going to parliament. Whatever is going to parliament, for me, should be curing a certain mischief. And this bill, per my understanding, is not curing that mischief that I want to see. Because it, it is it rather is lessening the kind of punishment that is supposed to be given to people who are seen. Well, you can make give, amendments. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So and that is what we are going to do. But I, I, I made this point because people took me out of contest All right. when I made this um, commentary on another platform. But it's something that I support All right. in its principles, with its philosophy, 
uh, is something that I'm going to vote for as a member of parliament. And I know that the good people of Otafo constituency in its entirety would want me to support this bill in parliament. But we should make sure that it should portray the kind of anger that the good people of Otafo constituency would want to see. Dr. Wani, what's your position on it? Uh, <clears throat> um, on the issue, um, I'll say that I'm also a practicing Catholic, um, a member of the Knight of Masha. I am as well. Okay. Council three. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, council uh, number thirteen. Okay. And so, we we we. There's no doubt that you know people like us who have, we are against the, 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 the you know this all this homosexuality, lesbianism, and so many other things. I think have been added to it with uh, the letters. Those uh, acronyms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some AA have appeared there, etc. And I believe that, I mean, they, they, they already it is in our, status, uh, the, the, our law books. They are there, you know, like uh, this canal knowledge, et cetera, that is there, you know, on natural canal knowledge, et cetera. We are there, and we, 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 we our problem has been the, uh, the inability to implement it. And I see this law as a law that is probably coming to, uh, to take into consideration the new developments that has come in this area. And uh, the, uh, for us to also look at the possibility of um, laying bare, you know, class, uh, uh, clarifying the situation very well and probably giving some just or unjust punishment that, you know, we are supposed to uh, met out to those who are involved. Indeed, we know that, honestly speaking, this thing is not part of our culture. It is, I would not say that it is a problem in our country, but some people somewhere else are trying to you know, force it on us. Okay. And that one is a problem. They, they try to link it with um, aid, and that is a problem for us. Currently, they try to even link it with the type of leadership that we should have. And as we are working now, I believe that uh, <laughs> at the higher echelons of uh, the political ladder, they also have a problem. For example, when it comes to my table, uh, as uh, let's say, when it comes, uh, the president will be saying that when it comes to my table as the president, what do I do? Even though he supports it. You feel it's going to be a challenge? For no, 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 no. no. Uh, he, he will assent to it eventually, I believe so. But the, 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 the challenge is because, uh, you know, here is the money, here is the bill. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how our people are going to also react. Because I understand that, is it in the American embassy or somewhere in Ghana here, they, uh, you know, the, the, the flag of these people have been hosted. Yeah, on, Pride, on Pride Day, World Pride Day, oh, okay. the, World Pride the, American, Day. the US embassy hosted yes. the flag. Yes, very good. LGBT. Who tells you that you know, they are observing whatever is happening in this country, and uh, they, they, they know what to do, because they used not to do that. So, so one one of the things, well, but the US we, we, we made like it clear yes, yes, that it's uh, it's become the U.S. government has made it clear that it's it's become a foreign policy. Yeah, that this is their position. Okay, it, and they'll be promoting. No, it. I honestly I've not studied the um, situation. It was late yesterday. Yes, I hope that will come out and we study it into detail. But as uh, I've been trying to look for whether there's a medical basis for this type of behavior. Um, in terms of uh, genetic basis, and honestly, well, you're, you're no doctor. Yes, no gene has. They've not been able to identify any gene that supports lesbianism, homosexuality, or all these deviant behaviors. There's no genetic basis. But much more, they probably will talk of psychosocial basis, but no genetic basis. And so, um, in terms of trying to just. Uh, uh, to, 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 to. A lot of people have been researching on this issue, trying to make sure that they can identify something that they can stand on it yeah. and say that, yes, we have a basis. Somebody is born uh, to be like this or like that, but there is no genetic but basis. As Vincent, one of the issues that's come up uh, as far as this, this bill is concerned, people are saying, 
Why do we want to get involved with what happens in people's rooms, private spaces, when they really don't offend anybody? Yes, you could have an issue with uh, they wanting to assert their rights and say, uh, we demand to be allowed to marry and get the whatever rights that come accrue to people who are married. But if yeah, they that, try that, to that, be in their own yeah. rooms and um, do stuff as they've always done, that, what's, 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 what's our problem? No, that, that, that is why, let me, let me, let me just uh, just it. That's why I'm saying that we need to study the document very, very well to see what is there and the type of punishment for various categories of, uh, you know, infringing on, on, on the law. But um, I have to uh, mention this aspect. Uh, you know, you know, suicidal attempt. It is um, a criminal offense to attempt to commit suicide. Personally, I'm against the criminalization of people who, are, who attempt to commit suicide because there's, some people are born in such a way that they are prone to depression. All right. You know, that's where it starts from. Okay. Yeah, there's a, 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 a genetic basis for that. So uh, uh, depression is a thing. Sometimes it runs in, even in a family where you see that you hear that the father committed suicide and uh, no, that sort of, or the mother committed suicide and that sort of thing. So you're against? So I'm, I'm against an attempt to criminalize suicide attempt. Okay. But that they rather need what? Medical help. Support, okay. Support. In also what we are doing now, there are two divisions that I want us to understand. Those who, we are not seeing them, but we, we suspect that or they, they, they are doing it in their rooms and uh, uh, somebody has heard it or seen something. And we also have those who are promoting it. They are just out promoting it and even want to establish a headquarters. Why should, <laughs> why should there be a headquarters for people you know, to, 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 to do something? Okay, so your position... This active promoters, yeah. I'm absolutely against them. Okay. Those who are doing their own thing somewhere else. One woman just, um, I think it was on TV yesterday. Uh, he was just shouting that the, the, uh, uh, yes, um, I mean, that the men, <laughs> he's trying to say the men are, <laughs> okay. uh, so you know, he's, he's something. He says that the, the men. Knowledge, uh, yes, on natural canon knowledge. On natural canon knowledge. But, uh, by, but, by but men some, some husbands, women, women, okay. yes. Some husbands, is that also um, criminalized? Criminal, should it be, be criminalized? Because the men are doing it in our bedrooms, etc. These are things that is between you and your husband. Yeah. I mean, nobody will, uh, I don't think, we will follow you to try to criminalize you. Do, do you get me? But so we, we need have, to classify. Do you even have what it takes to be monitoring what people do in their bedrooms? Um, issues will come up because, for example, this woman speaking, if it is a criminal offense, it means that the husband is being uh, accused. Okay. And so he ha they have to pass through the judicial process. And, you know, and that happened in a room nobody saw. Your word against my word. And probably when you come to the, the hospital, the medical doctors can examine, examine you and see that they are... Okay. You know, so you don't think here that, and there. You don't think that what happens between two I, should be criminalized? I, I think that we need to, uh, to, to look at um, the different punishments that we can give to those who are championing this cause. Okay. Who are all out to ensure that they get new converts to this, uh, you know, this uh, dehumanized activity. And possibly those that, I don't know whether it's an adventure, I don't know whether, the, uh, whatever happens in uh, people's bedrooms, and uh, we, we don't know about it, and it comes out, and we we'll try to follow and investigate. Uh, I, I think that there should be different punishment. That's what I'm saying, that, uh, let us wait. This document was laid yesterday. Very soon, I believe that all the papers will publish all aspects of it. Let us all study it as a country, let us fine tune it very well. Right. Say that by the time that it becomes a law, we know what we are doing. But I'm all for it. All right. So, Vincent, I was asking the question do we need to criminalize what happens in 
people's bedrooms. Israel. And indeed, we, we, should, we shouldn't only lose sight uh, of the fact that there's a natural kind of knowledge that happens between mm -mm. Uh, a man, a, and, a man and a woman, mm -mm. a husband and a, mm -mm. and a wife. Mm -mm. But what's the purpose of sexual intercourse? That's the big question. Procreation. For entertainment. That's okay. But the natural way for sexual intercourse, we all know the definition. And so in my estimation, or natural canal knowledge can also happen between a man and a woman. If you read a lot of cases, or if you read the cases in the Ghana Law Report, there are times that you see that through cross-examination, men and women also have unnatural canal knowledge. In that instance, you do not need anybody to monitor you from your room. When it comes out that this is a case that the court is dealing with, or natural canal knowledge, uh, will suffice. It is not also just about a man sleeping with a, a man, but sometimes even a man sleeping with an animal, and that is what Section 104 of the Criminal Offenses Act also stipulates. So I am of the opinion that this is an issue that we have to deal with very tactfully, and a lot of consultations and a lot of engagements will have to go into it before we can fine-tune what is already laid before Parliament. In the current form, um, it's okay, but I am not so much convinced about um, the how punishment. the punishment okay. and how it is going to be meted out to people. Right. Um, I'm also happy with the fact that um, this seek to also criminalize people who champion it. If you come and sit on TV like this and you champion LGBTQ, you do not necessarily have to be seen committing unnatural criminal knowledge in your room, but just the fact that you are a champion and a crusader of LGBTQ is enough to suffice that you are engaging or perpetuating an illegality. And so um, these are some of the provisions that I see in the bill mm. that I'm also enthused about. But, but you know, I think that the principle is that LGBTQ is one that is at variance with the moral fabric of us as a nation, as a Ghana, um, as, as a Ghanaian society. It's something that everybody is not happy about the fact that people will have to parade themselves around us and what have you. Yes. These are things that we do not want to see um, in our country. But as a nation, we should also be very tactful with how we go about it. Um, something that tactful because the the influence they have quite a bit of influence. You you have here. you have money. You are giving me money. This is your philosophy. I want the money from you. If if. There are two ways that I can get the money from you. If I say yes, I'll get it. Mm -hmm. If I keep quiet or if I mute, I, I will still get it. If our lot in this country is already criminalizing or natural canal knowledge and LGBTQI, why do you make it topical? Because it's already <laughs> so for, criminal offense. So for you, you would have uh, preferred that we left it's as it is. The point I want to make is that, you see, that is where people uh, tend to get you wrong. It is different if it is not criminal in our current state. It is different. If it is not criminal in our current state, it is, it is not going to be my commentary. But my commentary is that we already have stiffer punishment that is supposed to be meted out to people who engage in unnatural canal knowledge. You already have our laws like that. And it's a law that I support. It's a law that I know that, um, that reflect the, the, the Ghanaian society. criminalize um, advocacy. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, that the timing and the, 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 the exigencies of the time that we are in the impact of COVID and what have you. As a nation, is this something that we think that we need to do now? We, well, we, we, have, we have a nation to govern. Well, but the no, issues, hold on. We have, we the have, we have a nation up. to govern. We, we have our economy to fix. We have jobs. We have corruption to tackle. Absolutely. We have a whole lot of issues to deal with. But that notwithstanding, and nobody should take me wrong, that notwithstanding, it's a bill I support. Okay. But I'm but just saying that diplomacy, that. diplomacy we, we is very important in, in yeah. governance. Yeah. You know, diplomacy is very, very important in governance. If you eliminate diplomacy in governance, I mean, any nation who eliminates diplomacy, Do you, you feel have a problem. That uh, President Okuvado will have a challenge assenting to it? Not at all. He has already stated a number of times that LGBTQI is not going to happen 
during well, this era? Considering the, the kind of pushback and the influence of the movement, will do you, are you his, his, his Excellency is just a reflection of the people. His Excellency Nana Redan Kufado is not a persona on himself. It is, he is wielding the power of the sovereign of the people, the sovereignty of the people. What the people want is what he will do. If the people's representatives in parliament goes to parliament and approves this bill, which I am quite sure that every parliamentarian, the 275 of that, yeah. is going to approve this bill. If the people's representative approves it, I do not have any doubt in my mind that His Excellency the President is not going to assent to it. He's going to assent to it because he has already said that it is not going to be his time, that LGBTQ is going to be legalized. Yeah. And of course, there's not enough agitation as to the rights of people um, who are straight, people who are gays, people who are lesbians. We, we don't have that agitation enough. And I also don't see it in the near future. It's something that probably, probably, centuries to come, we would be able to see that. But that is not what we are seeing as, as far as this our generation right. is concerned. And so I know that His Excellency the President is going to reflect the moral fabric of the Ghanaian people and assent to the bill. That is if the people's representatives also approves this bill that is laid in Parliament. Let's move on to something that's bothering us uh, right now. We're having to do with it. It has to do with COVID-19. We're seeing the, the numbers surging. Yesterday, uh, the figure that we had uh, for July 29th, I believe, we're looking at almost 6,000 active cases, and it's become clear that the Delta variant is on rampage. What is it that Parliament can do to support the movement to get people to adhere to the protocols? Because this has been a challenge. You, you go out there, you see people not wearing uh, face masks, and uh, they're going about their business as you do. A lot of them say they're fatigued. They're tired, and some of them to say, we actually don't believe that there's COVID because of the actions of, of our leaders. What is it that we can do? Uh, Doc, you Okay, okay. Um, let me first say that uh, the problem now we have in Ghana is that somewhere along the line, it appears a leadership or should I narrow it down to possibly political leadership, you know, relaxed in their own uh, advocacy for people to wear masks. It appears that we have lost our moral high ground to preach about observing the protocol. And that is because of what happened. We went for election after that, later on these funerals, that involve uh, practically people not obeying the, 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 the and protocol. Mass yes, demonstrations, uh, no, weddings. Uh, Etc. that has taken place. And the people seem to say that you political leadership, when it is convenient for you, you don't observe the protocol. When it is convenient for you, uh, you call people together and you don't observe the social distancing. And when, uh, uh, later on, when you want, you can now tell us that we should go back and wear our masks, we should do this, etc. So it appears that we have lost our moral high ground to preach that. But the situation I want Ghanaians to understand is that, you know, the beta wave or whatever wave, the second wave has passed, more people were killed than uh, even the first wave that we, we, we all observed the distance very well. Now we have a delta wave, uh, you know, that is supposed to be much more virulent than the first and second wave. And yet, it appears that the pro we are not ready to observe the protocol. So we, 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 we have to appeal to the people that, you know, just like one um, priest said, don't observe what I'm doing, you know. You listen to what we are saying. I don't know, it was in three. I'm only trying to interpret it. My friend, my Mary, I'm from Barbara, same America. Meanwhile, he was a drunkard. <laughs> yes, but he was a priest. So he said people shouldn't look at his lifestyle, but what he's saying. So I also see this opportunity to tell people that 
Don't look at we the leadership, but do what you know we tell you to do. Having said this, this country has delayed in its rule out of vaccines. That is the major problem that we are facing. In developed countries now, even though the, the Delta wave is on, they have observed that the number of people who are dying from it is reducing. Yeah. Those who are getting very serious, uh, or those who are getting severely ill, that one too is reducing. And that is because they've taken their vaccines. Uh, if it's a double vaccine, they've taken that, a complete one. So when even they fall sick, it is a mild one. So in Ghana here, our major problem is that there has been a delay in the rollout of our vaccine program. And as we speak now, the government cannot even get some to buy at the open market. And that's the challenge. That, the yeah, government that, says that, that yeah, we have the, yeah, we have but the we, money we have to, to buy. But, but, not we, that, but we have to increase our diplomacy. The first batch that came, uh, 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 oh, the COVAX okay. facility, it was, Ghana was the first country in Sub-Saharan Africa to receive their own. As we speak now, yesterday, I think I read somewhere else, Nigeria, well, Nigeria yeah. have received another four million uh, doses. Well, uh, we, we've been told that uh, yes. we're also going to get ours. Ours, but but so, but, so but the but first the first one that came, came Ghana got it. Ghana first, got first. it first. Mm. Why, why can't so we? another country will get a second. No, 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 no. Why don't we remain first? No. <laughs> we have to work out. We can't have it first that, all the no, time, no, no. especially if some it's a it's a yeah, gift. Diplomacy. Some of them have not even gotten any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We don't let us always go and comparing ourselves with the Chad and whatever countries that you have. You know, Tanzania, so they, they, they. you know, let us always be with the, the, the best. And when you were in school, is that not what you were always struggling to do? We, we, we always wanted to be with the best. Oh, well, the, the be, All of being, us. being the best is... Being the best being, or with the best. Be, being the best that, that or being the, with the, the best. The minimum this thing was to be with the best. that way before now, yes. would have put in some money or made it clear that we're interested in getting the vaccines. That's what I'm saying that, I was, yes. The ship has sailed. We lost the opportunity. <laughs> and now we're looking for the vaccines. We have the money. Yeah. But we so that is, that is the major problem now we are facing. But having said this, I yeah. think that, you know, um, half a loaf is better than none. And we still have to <laughs> be with our, 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 our old and tested protocols. Yeah. And to such a time that... Wearing, you know, the, the, wearing the, the, of the mask, washing yeah. your hands, social distancing. Social dis dis distancing. Uh, etc. Until such a time that the vaccines yeah. do arrive. Vincent, do you get that pushback when you go to your constituency and you're trying to get the people, you know, wear your mask? And then they'll tell you that. I'm told they'll tell you uh, uh, in Grand Foyer area. Mm -hmm. I mean, a uh, craft for mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. But Israel, do, do you know that there are people still in this country who don't believe that COVID exists? Oh, yes. I know. The, 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 the terminology that they give to what is. It's, it's, it's a foreign segment. Yeah. For those of us in Accra, things that is for those abroad. For those of us also in the it's villages, think that yeah. it is for Accra, the people yeah. in Accra and Kumasi. That is the kind of philosophy some of our people are having. And I think that the president couldn't have put it better when he said that we've let off our guard. When COVID-19 started, a lot of the Ghanaian people, and I think that it is because of how leadership also took it serious. A lot of people were using the protocols very well. People were using their nose masks very well. You moved to Makola at a time when lockdown was over. People were using their, uh, their nose masks. People were showing the distance in the one meter um, distancing. People were using sanitizers and what have you. But today, as we speak, we do not see that, and people, people do not even regard that the COVID is existing. Go to places whereby they admit COVID patient. There you will see that COVID is real. Today, they, go to International they, Maritime Hospital. Yeah. It's full. There, there are many who say that I, I, I don't know anybody who's, who's had COVID. I haven't seen anybody or I don't I, know anybody I know who's a died. lot of friends who had COVID. A lot of friends. You remember? My own boss, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, yeah. and uh, a 
close number of people who were very close to him. Because yeah. at the time, I was in the constituency campaigning. So I'd, <laughs> I would say I did not have the opportunity, to put it lightly, to be infected with COVID. But everybody was around Dr. Matupuku Pepper at the time had COVID. I know of well, I had very, very good friends that I, can, I, I don't have to mention their names on there. But people who nearly lost their lives very close to me yeah. because of COVID. Yeah. Yet people disregard the impact and the severity of COVID-19 because uh, they feel that uh, it is foreign sickness and what have you. We need to use biggest, uh, uh, big platforms like these to communicate to the Ghanaian people that COVID-19 is real. You move to places where patients of COVID-19 are, you realize that the places are full. Just about last two weeks, I heard the Ashanti Regional Director of um, the Ghana Health Service claiming that the number of people who have been infected with um, COVID-19 is, 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 is increasingly increasing uh, to the extent that they fear that if that is the kind of rate that people are going to be infected with the COVID, especially with the inflection of the Delta, the Delta variant. variant. Then it means that the capacity to which they will be able to um, hold up the situation will not be there anymore because you cannot just say that there's a 100 bed facility for COVID-19 and that will mean that it will be able to admit 100 people. No, the facility will be there, but the human capacity to be able to deal with 100 people is not there. And at the point in time, they will tell you that even though it is 100 capacity, COVID-19 facility, but it can take maybe 25 or 30. Yeah. So what it means is that everybody will have to be careful and everybody will have to make sure that you, the protocols are being adhered to. The President of the Republic have already um, cautioned that if we do not follow the protocols very well, it is possible that there can be a second lockdown. But what is the impact of a second lockdown? The impact is that there will not be any economic activity and that economic activity that we are going to lose will mean that no uh, flows of revenue. The Minister of Finance have already come to Parliament to project the revenues that we can get within a year. In the absence of that revenue, what it means is that uh, expenditures will not be met and we need to also get money to be able to do other things. So uh, the impact is going to be dying. Okay. And we have already moved from uh, an era whereby our economic growth was about 6.7 in 2019 and now it has dwindled to about 2 point something or 3 point something, sending us back to the days of 2012 when the NDC was in government. And so that is not the kind of things that we want to see because... You, you had to mention the NDC. Uh, but how about because enforcement? Because we're talking, we're talking about advocacy, trying to encourage people to wear their masks. But we have laws that require that we enforce these things. You remember there was an executive instrument um, that was triggered by His Excellency the President, Nanado uh, Namko Kufado, with respect to um, protocols that are supposed to be adhered by the Ghanaian people and failure to uh, adhere to those protocols will be tantamount to certain sanctions. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, around this table, we all agree that enforcement has been a problem or has been a challenge. Um, but when I listened to His Excellency the President the last time, that, is, that was on his 25th or 26th um, engagement with the Ghanaian people with respect to COVID-19, he was very clear and succinct about the fact that he is now going to ensure that there is that enforcement and he has charged the Ghana Police Service, which, who, uh, which is clothed with the legal responsibility to enforce yeah. um, these lot. So when you are seen walking around without a nose mask, our lots are very clear about it, that you can't be arrested and the punitive sanctions that are there for you should be enforced. So the new IGP, Dr. Dampari, I know that you are very young in office. Just about a week, not even a week, not it was either. sworn in just last Friday, so just about three or four days. Um, I will urge you, Dr. Dampari, I know you are a man of your words and I know that you have very good convictions to change the image of the Ghana Police Service. I'm hoping that the President's Directive of Enforcement uh, would be dealt with so that the Ghanaian people will know that indeed COVID-19 is not a foreign um, sickness. Dr. Wani, would mm. you suggest um, other, can we look at the punishment regime or the sanctions regime again and probably uh, make them less punitive, that way we can enforce them because some of the fines that were introduced at the time um, 
the consideration was that they were too high and really they were not feasible. Yeah, um, we, we, we can make the laws or the regulations and bylaws, etc. that we want, but its implementation has been a problem. And I remember that some people were arrested for no social distancing and they were all kept in the pickups, <laughs> you know. And it became the talk of uh, it defeats the purpose. Yes, it's defeat but the purpose. Yeah, we, we could also decide to ask them elsewhere. We could decide to send them to um, stadiums and keep them there. Let them know. sit there for a while. You know, so possibly if uh, I don't know whether fines or something, some mild fines or something could, 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 could do. And I'll say that whenever you, you are fined about two or three times a day, you, you might, you know that, yes. You've, you, you've got to stop it because... You're detained at the stadium you know? for some hours. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but um, uh, having said that, I believe that, you know, as a country, we, we need to plan very well. I don't know whether we thought that the COVID was a one-touch uh, uh, issue uh, because our COVID expenditure is so overblown. I mean, uh, 19 billion, they call this figure. And they want to attribute everything to COVID, even though some of us believe that it's, it was because of the election so, year. Okay, is that do, the do you get me? So we should, we, we, we should, Look. we should, no, 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 no. But you went to 2012, are we in 2012? You we went to allow the Ghanaian people to die, that's what you're saying. I'm though. saying that 2012, I mean, I'm saying that the, 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 if it's expensive, the expen no, 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 no. Yes, yes, you mentioned I'm talking of, so you also mentioned. I'm talking of the expenditure. If COVID is expenditure, expensive, yes. No, 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 no. That's what no, 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 no. I mean, it's, 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 it's too much. On, it's quite on the high side. Really? Even though we so believe that die. probably because of it was an election year. Because you can't account for this money that, that was used left and right. And then, uh, you know, so we should actually... <laughs> is, is it the case that it can't be accounted? <laughs> oh, yeah. you no, are no, in no, 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 no. You are in Parliament. Yeah, the Every Minister of Health came spent. and said that I can only account for 600 million Ghana cities. He came and said, I can only account for 600 million. Yes, with, with the Absolutely. Minister of Health. Very good. You know? And up to now, as we speak, as we speak, nobody is ready to put all the departments together and arrive Parliament at the 19 that. billion. Bring them together. Do, do you huh? know that no mask, do you know that no mask, no we mask was, was procured for Parliament. all students in this country? Do you huh? know that? Oh, you, you stop. And do you know uh, that that uh, was done by the Minister of Trade or mm -hmm. the Ministry of Trade? Yes. So if, so if you make this it argument. it is the work of the Ministry of Trade. That's the, not the, fair. The to now, you know, act together and account for this gargantuan money. Oh. That you, can, uh, you, you we, have we, the we power to So let us ask a question. I mean, how many questions have we asked? Uh, so let us uh, make sure that we plan for a long-term uh, management of COVID. Because um, if you look at the COVID fund, it got to 56 million. And the last time I think that they gave us a, a brief on it, it was left with 7 million in it. And now we are projected that there's going to be a third wave, which might be much more severe than um, the first and second. Yeah. And look at the amount of money that we have, you know, uh, sitting down. We are now on a third wave, about 900 bil uh, million or so, uh, Genesis have been budgeted for the COVID. During the media review, the minister said they had released 126 million, you know, for, for, for the purpose. And we, we can't, uh, uh, the rest of the money is not yet available. And uh, as we even speak, there's a $16 uh, million dollars that they say they, they used to pay for a uh, food uh, vaccine. And one ministry, that is the Ministry of Finance, is saying that during his media review, it was there. And the, the Minister of Health, it's also claimed that he, no payment has been made for any Sputnik. So, and you ask these questions, and sometimes you think that you are just going to get answers by the next day or two days, and it continues like that. I mean, hanging for people to, to speculate, or for us, or if you want, go and speculate. Yeah. But the answers are not coming. Eventually, they sh you should get them to Parliament to, to get to do that. 
you get to ans answer all the questions that you have. Yeah, well, that, that is true. But some of these things could have easily been answered if, I mean, I've paid for it, I've not paid for it. Can't this thing be resolved within 24 hours, 48 hours? Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, look at this UTAC issue. For about three weeks or so now, these people have been advertised, we'll go on strike, we'll go on strike, we'll go on strike. And we sit down until they go on strike. Yeah. Before Vincent, we, we, we call Vincent, them. Vincent, why, why would Before we, have, we call uh, them. sat down and, and I mean, they, they, they made it clear that that's what they were going to do. It happened. That they this were thing has been dragging. Dragging. I mean, but you see, when, I'm when, not saying when that Doc, uh, nobody. When, when I've got my, my, my daughter Doc, through in, in, in the, uh, the university. There. Doc, Doc. So affected. Doc. Yes, also affected. Doc. So I'm not happy that, you know, you, you uh, and you I, talk. Doc, you and I are in parliament. You know? We understand that there are rules that are supposed to be followed before you can declare a strike in this country. Failure to exhaust those rules and regulations will mean that the strike that you've declared is illegal. I am happy. Well, yesterday, I am the happy. National Labor Commission didn't declare their strike illegal. I, I'm not saying so, but they also mentioned that they were still at the negotiation table. To my estimation, if you are still at the negotiation table and you need to exhaust the uh, opportunities that are available to you, why do you declare a strike? I am also not in any way saying that the strike that has been declared by uh, UTAC is unconscionable or is unreasonable. If you listen to them very well, yes, there are bases for it. There are some conditions of service that they are supposed to be um, getting from uh, the government. But it does not also allow for certain untruths to be peddled, especially when you say that uh, professors are not even paid up to 5,000 Ghana cities. That cannot be true because you know that a single spine salary structure puts a professor at level 25. And level 25 for the single spine salary structure is about 74,000 Ghana cities and over. If you do the simple calculation by dividing 74,000 by 12, it will tell you that a professor at the level, that is even for step one, at the level of 25, level 25, is not getting less than 6,200 cities a month. So, I mean, I am not happy with how we have to be throwing some of these issues out to the public, especially when we know that there are better ways of um, dealing but, with this but, matter. But you see, we, we, we tend to let these things drag for so long, agreed. then something happens. Agreed, agreed. And then they, they decide to embark on a strike. You know but do you know, do, you know, do you know the biggest problem of that? Or do you know the uh, biggest trigger of that? When we are going to the negotiation table, you don't go with an entrenched position. Government will say, this is my opinion. We, the stakeholders, or we, the UTAC people who you are see, also... We can't say that for, in the, for the case of UTAC, as far as I'm concerned, because this is a conversation they've been having for a while. Mm. It appears government actually, you know, empathizes with their position. Let me cite an example for you. CK Tadem in Navrongo. You know that it was um, just made a full-fledged university out of UDS. And do you know that because they are now a full-fledged university, they are supposed to be migrated on the single spine salary uh, or the IPPD2. What it means is that hitherto they were being paid from UDS, but now the migration will have to happen. They are now resisting the migration because they feel that they will be worse off. Because UDS, when they pay them, is, is, is a better remuneration that they get as to the migration. What it means is that now you are resisting the migration, so you know, guess who is going to pay you? Oh. They're not going to be paid. It still comes guess. back to the so UTAC. I'm saying the, the, the UTAC case is quite clear. Yes. They have made it clear that, look, in fact, we are not actually asking for more money. Right. We are looking for a restoration right. where we used to be. Right. And this, they say they've been having the conversations right. with government for a while, and except they don't think that government is that committed. Mm -mm to making sure things happen. And, and, and they've been talking about this for so long until uh, they had to embark Israel, on Israel, you cannot take that away from them. You cannot take that away from UTAC. Why? I was the peer to the Ministry of Education, so I know about all these happenings. At the time that they started with this um, engagement with NLC, I am fully aware. You cannot take it away from the UTAC people. Me, in meantime, fact, they, in fact they, are right in claiming, they are right in claiming, they are right in claiming the conditions of service um, that is due them. But I'm saying, the impact of COVID in 2020, that for the first time in the history and annals of this country, our students had to be learning online. 
for the first time in the history and annals of this country. Our calendar in the various universities have been distorted because of the impact of COVID. The National Union of Ghana Student Secretary couldn't have put it better when he said that. They are pleading with UTAC, especially considering the situation that they find themselves, that if a final year student has lost almost a year because of the impact of COVID, because now the calendar has been distorted, yet UTAC is now claiming that they deserve certain kind of condition of service, which I agree, but with the time that we find ourselves in, can we be a bit humanistic, a, 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 bit, a bit understanding to the number of students out there in our various universities, KNUST, University of Ghana, who have to go through this difficulty of not being allowed to write their exams because UTAC is on strike. Yes, it is right that you ask for what you deserve, but the times that we are in, I ask this big question, UTAC, Considering our children and considering our brothers and sisters that we find ourselves that they find themselves in the various universities, do we have to punish them this way? Especially when there's a pandemic that you and I and all of us did not anticipate that there's going to be this COVID-19 and the impact is dying and the impact has had a toll on our educational system. Do we need to add this upon the child or upon the students in KN West University of Ghana? It is by no fault of this. That right. COVID uh, Israel, so I'm uh, pleading, I'm pleading with them, Israel. Yeah, we, we, are, we, are, we are pleading, that, but... That UTAC should reconsider their decision. On Thursday, as the NLC has called them to come back to the um, negotiation table, they should avail themselves and ensure that we end this matter amicably. Okay. Israel, we are all pleading, you yeah. see. But there's no need to shed tears for this government, and so far as some of these issues are concerned. Why? Um, within the, 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 these six months, they've borrowed about 43 billion, and none of them, none, everything has gone into goods and services and compensation. And so everybody knows that, yes, it, they, they, they are not interested in borrowing for infrastructure. You know, we have to wrap up the conversation. Yes. But I and want to end with this. I've been talking about the fact that the Ghana yeah. Medical Association is also warning. So they are talking about the non implementation of conditions of service for medical doctors and dentists working with the Ministry of Health and its agents, September 2021, failure to which the following roadmap will kickstart. Outpatient services to be suspended for a week, effective Friday, 1st October 2021. Withdrawal of all inpatient services will begin the following week, effective Friday, 8th October 2021, if all the issues are still not res completely resolved. The next week, beginning 15th October, we'll see a complete withdrawal of all services. They, they've issued this warning, and I'm hoping that the authorities yeah. will take it up and deal with it so that we don't have another strike uh, on, on our hands. But thank you very much, uh, both, that, for that's coming. That's a good call. That's okay. a good call. Yeah, uh, Vincent Asifa, uh, Tafo MP, and uh, Dr. Mark Nawani, okay. who is the NABDAM. MP. Uh, we're watching AM show. We have more coming. Your way. We'll be discussing Fix the Country. The group is to hit the streets on August 4. That's tomorrow. We'll be having a conversation with them. Do stay tuned in. There's more coming up on the AM show. Welcome back. This is the AM show. Now, on the 3rd of May this year, a movement was born. The hashtag was Fix the Country. And for that day and many days after, that hashtag trended as millions of Ghanaians gathered together to express the things that they wish would be fixed about this country that we love so much. Um, there is a demonstration tomorrow. There has been, of course, a journey that we've been on, tried to demonstrate um, try to express. Of course, there was the um, clap back, um, fix yourself. It's just been an interesting um, 
few months around this hashtag fix the country and everything that it represents. But like I said, tomorrow there will be a demonstration. This morning joining us on the AM show is Yakubu Hadi. He's a fighter general, <laughs> Economic Fighters League, love that title, fighter general. Um, and we just want to touch base with him, see what the process has been like and what we can expect tomorrow. Good morning, Yakubu. Uh, good morning. Great, great to see you this morning. Um, you look like you're on fire, looking like a, a fighter <laughs> general indeed. <laughs> okay, so um, do you want to just quickly oh, take well, us? Oh, well, I mean, so, yes, but... we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are on course. Mm -hmm. We are looking um, to, have, to have our demonstration tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun, actually. Okay. I, I don't, I'm not to this point where you can actually legally demonstrate. Okay, it um, looks like we're going to try and get Yakubu back. Um, but Izzy, this morning you were talking about the fact that yeah. there had been so many issues in being able to get to this they, point. They sought to demonstrate and uh, they faced a number of frustrations, including having to end up in court. Mm. And eventually they get in the, the all clear yeah. to go ahead with the demonstration. And uh, now they say they've met with the, with the IGP, IGP, the yeah. new IGP. So they yes. met with the old IGP and they've now met with the new, with the new IGP, IGP, just to yeah. clarify things. Okay, um, Yakubu, well, thank you for, for joining us once again. So do you want to just let us know what that process has been like to be able to get to um, being able to demonstrate legally tomorrow? Right, so um, our first notice for demonstration was issued for 9th May. And um, we are in August, and uh, <laughs> the demonstration is now materializing in August. So it's been a long journey. Um, we had various issues with the state and the police. The, um, the, 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 the initial club back was, you know, um, a sort of propaganda um, a counter hashtag, which said that instead of shouting fix the country, we should fix ourselves. Mm. And um, when did that when that did not work, there, there was another attempt to sort of um, link this to partisan interests, um, just to uh, mar the, 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 the genuine you know, concerns of the people. That also uh, did not work. Um, then came the NDC in the aftermath of the death of uh, one of the, uh, one of our activists, uh, Kaka in Ejura, um, whose soul we bless and who we pay respect to for all the work that he has done and the legacy he has left. Um, NDC was able to quickly uh, get the go ahead to demonstrate. That was uh, after we had been sent to court for uh, injunction upon injunction. In fact, in fact, the first injunction that was secured, it was secured on a day that we um, we had gone into meeting with uh, with, with top officials uh, of the state, which they eventually did. A very ridiculous injunction at that, at my, 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 because it, 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 it basically perpetually banned us from um, demonstrate ever demonstrating um, on fix the country. So uh, we had to go to court. We we had to take that that to court because we could not um, allow that to stand. And being law-abiding citizens, we use the court process to. Um, Quash that injunction. Everybody who read that injunction knew that it could not stand um, the test of, 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 of law. Um, then there was another attempt by the states, uh, the police represented by the Attorney General to um, secure a fresh injunction or to renew the old injunction, which was then also thrown away because the, the, you, could, you could not be seeking an injunction against an event that was supposed to happen on Knife May, which Knife May had at that time actually passed. So that, that motion had become moot. All right. Um, 
So, yeah, yes, I, I, I can those... understand, uh, Yakubu Hadi, I can understand that, yeah, it's been a long road, but eventually you're saying that you met, well, you got the all clear to embark on the demonstration. And you first met with the former IGP. Now you've also met with the new IGP. So even though he had, and you had come to some understanding with the old IGP, you still had to meet with the new IGP. Tell us the outcome of that meeting. Yes, yeah, so um, we met with the old IGP, the former IGP, um, immediately after, I mean, events following the death of, of, of Kaka, um, to sort of elevate the issues of security of activists and the interaction between people who are campaigning or who are, mm. are raising their voices on the platform of Fix the Country, or in whichever capacity as citizens, um, and then their interactions with the police and, and other security services. Uh, in that meeting, we pointed out to him how the police had sought to frustrate our demonstration, whilst allowing other actors, such as the, uh, the, 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 the funerals that were, that were organized by the New Patriotic Party and the demonstration that was held by the NDC um, you know, we pointed out the, 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 the double speak and the double standards, selective application of the law in allowing one um, actor to demonstrate and preventing us also to demonstrate. He made the point that they, they, they were not against our demonstration and, and you know, all of that. Uh, but then we, 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 we told him how talking nice in the office was completely different from how the interactions were on the ground. Yeah. Of course. Now, um, afterwards, we then issued a new notice to the regional command um, for a demonstration on the 4th. And we have been back and forth. I think we've met them like uh, four or five times already. Um, the last meeting was last Friday with the regional command. Um, and we were informed that the IGP, the new IGP, wanted to meet. So we were with the new IGP yesterday um, at his request. And he uh, mentioned that he had asked for the meeting just to give us assurance that the police will be there to protect the protesters right. and they will provide maximum protection for people who are expressing their democratic and constitutionally guaranteed rights. I was also read in the press uh, statement that you issued that you would have your own marshals. Uh, what, yes. <laughs> what's the role of these marshals that you're bringing on board? Okay, ma the marshals are just um, volunteers, sort of, who have been um, assembled and trained in order to be guiding the people on the route. Uh, because we don't want people uh, veering off and then maybe... Okay. Um, interfering with the, with other people who may not be part of the demonstration or causing any sort of confusion that we do not want to happen. So the, the marshals are people who would be in reflector jackets, who would be directing people on how to move on the, on the, on the, on the road and, um, you know, also liaising with the police in terms of um, what is happening in the crowd and what's going on. Uh, they will also be in charge of making sure that people wear their, their masks okay. uh, and, uh, and distance themselves reasonably uh, within the crowd. So okay. these, are, these, these are just the, 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 the functions that we've assigned to them. Now, you talk about when you initially intended to embark on this demonstration, May 9th. And at the time, there was such groundswell on social media. You had a lot of support. The, Hashtag fix the country was trending and trended for a while. Now we're looking at the several months on. Do you feel that the delay has robbed you of the thunder and the groundswell that you enjoyed at the time? Because I'm not sure fix the country is even trending now. now yeah. And it's supposed to be a social, largely social media movement. Mm. Well, yeah, Evans, you, you could, yeah, I said Evans, Israel, you, you could say that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, you could say that, Israel. Um, 
um, I mean, time has lapsed and some people have dropped off. But I think one advantage of the long, you know, um, drug of time has given us is for people to be able to digest all the issues that mm-hmm. had been raised. You see, millions of tweets had been sent out and it has given us um, the opportunity to analyze all the, all the issues that were raised about um, fix the country. People have different understanding of what they think needs fixing in this country. And all of that comes together to make what fix the country really is. So um, the lack of time has given opportunity for people to, 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 um, to, to completely digest all these issues and understand from their own perspective where the um, fix the country has come from and if it is something that they want to. Mind you, fix the country is not a nine-day wonder. It's not a one-day thing. It is a campaign that has um, acquired a life of its own. And it is something that does not stop after a demonstration. Right. And therefore, and therefore, people need the opportunity to have the conversations and to be able to digest whether it is the, it is something that they, long, they want to be part of in the long haul. And I think that a lot of time has given us the, that opportunity. And we can clearly say that those who will be coming out tomorrow are people who have deep understanding of all the issues and have chosen to stay with it. And these are the quality numbers that any uh, campaigner will need. All right. So, how did, and which is the issue? You talk about millions of tweets have gone out. But are you anticipating that these millions of tweets will translate, translate. into numbers? on the ground come tomorrow. Well, um, Israel, you, you would understand that on Twitter, the, 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 uh, the dynamics are not quite straightforward. Oh, yeah, which, yeah, is, which is a challenge, because it's exactly. easy to go on your phone <laughs> and just tweet, fix the country, exactly. and attach a hashtag. Exactly. But when it requires yes. that you step out onto the streets, it's then it becomes a problem, thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. The dynamics are quite different. There are people who may have been tweeting even from places in America or London or somewhere. So definitely they wouldn't be able to, to show up. There are also people who may have been tweeting in my in my um, hometown. Um, you know. So if they are not in Accra, they may not be able to. But the, the point of Push, move, moving this from um, social media to the grounds is to give the is to give uh, physical expression to the virtual you know aspirations and frustrations that people have shown. And as I have said, the lack of time has given the opportunity for people to completely digest issues surrounding things the country. And and what we need are people who have chosen despite. The, the, the frustrations that we've gone through with the police to stay with the cause. And these are the numbers that you would want, you know, to deal with because these are people who, no matter what happens, are ready to stand up and yeah. fight for the country All and right. make sure that nothing stops them on the way. What kind of numbers are you anticipating? 500,000, 5,000? Well, yesterday when we were... Um, at the meet at the police headquarters, we are asked this question: How many people are we expecting? Um, we 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 don't want to put a, a, a number on it because um, this is not a group that you will say we have this particular um, number of people. This is a campaign that people from various walks of life um, are identifying with. So so it is safe to say that. Uh, Ghanaians will show up. Uh, the police said they are preparing for two thousand between two thousand and five thousand. That's for their own. That's for their preparation. Right. But we can have more or less. It doesn't really matter. What what needs to be said is that the quality of the numbers um, matters because when people clearly understand the issue, they are not just coming to demonstrate as a keep fit exercise. They are demonstrating with a deep understanding of what they want to achieve where they want to go, and how they know that they've got where they want to go. Now, quickly, since you mentioned the uh, carcass passing and the meeting you had with the IGP, I'm, I'm curious. 
Did you inquire as to the latest as far as the investigations are concerned? Well, the police were not really um, interested in discussing other matters. They were more um, focused on talking about how they can prepare for the demonstration. Okay. Uh, there are other steps that we had outlined that we will be taking in, in connection with the death of Kaka and the investigations and whatnot. Um, we've heard that the, the Edua committee, so-called, has submitted his um, report to the interior minister. Uh, from the beginning, in fact, based on some of the, line, the lines of questionings in terms of even focus on criticizing the media and Joy News and what Joy News did and didn't do, whether Kaka was a member of FIXEC and all of that, it, it had waned our confidence in even that, that committee. So we had said that we would, we would pursue independent investigations with um, um, Shrag and other bodies. These are matters that are still on the table. And um, in, the, in the aftermath of the demonstration, we will, we will be taking them up and we'll be following up with everything else that is connected to that. All right. Well, ultimately, um, just before you go, what are you hoping to achieve in this physical expression um, of this virtual demonstration which started that you have not been able to achieve virtually because you've had um you've had the opportunity to dialogue with you know governments you've had the opportunity to bring the whole nation on board so what are you really hoping and um, that you will achieve tomorrow especially considering that you may not have the virtual numbers um, that you've had and that the numbers may be less than than what we've seen on social media well i think that the first important thing that we want to put across is that People have the democratic right to express themselves through protests, through demonstrations, through hashtags, through any sort of means that they choose legally to express their, 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 their frustrations at the system. So um, one thing that needs to be put across is the fact that all the frustrations, all the um, you know roadblocks that were put on our way, we had to go to the Supreme Court in order to make sure that that particular right is not given up. You know, no matter what the frustrations are, that's okay. that's one critical thing okay. that going on the street communicates. In in our opinion, another thing is that look, it is possible for us to come together um, as citizens mm. and not MPP or NDC. Okay. Because you will see that this is, this is, this is one of the, uh, the, the, the this, this would be one of the most prominent, you know, expressions of, um, of, of, of frustration at the system, something that is completely nonpartisan, something that is led um, that that is, you know, um, convened by citizens who are not affiliated with party A or party, or party. B. Okay. So that okay. it becomes a citizen, a citizen focused system, um, a citizen focused event that is aimed at um, uh, making sure that the system is changed for the benefit of all. Okay. Instead of just the few at the top there. Okay, right. We've we've got that. Thank you very much, um, Yakubu, for joining us this morning. So, uh, and if we, you give me one second, I will just read through the routes for people who might want to come. Okay, sure. Uh, sure. And I encourage everybody to come because this is something that concerns all of us. Mm -hmm. We are neither NDC nor MPP. We are just citizens of this country. We are starting at Obraspot at seven a.m. Okay. Seven a.m. tomorrow, uh, from seven a.m. from Obraspot. We are moving through the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue, turn at Farisco, um, um, all the way to TUC, and then um, go past the Kimbu, Kimbu Secondary School to the JA Mills High Street, and then end at the uh, Independence Square. Okay. Uh, all right. It will be a peaceful move. Police will be there to protect everybody. Okay. There is no need to fear. Okay. And of course, we'll be covering you um, here on Joy News. And so if you're watching us and you, you want to find out 
where the demonstration has reached. If you're watching us, you'll definitely um, know that. Thank you, Yakubu, for sharing your morning with us. A Fix the Country demonstration is tomorrow, August 4th at 7 a.m. We're taking a short break. When we come back, IB joins us with Showbiz.